So first question goes that what actually got you into metal music at first? Do you recall when you heard metal for the first time? Um, yes, I remember I was a painter um, working for my friend Kenneth Hine and we were painting apartments and his um, he showed me Hope's Fall, No Wings to Speak Of album and uh, Norma Jean, Bless the Mother, Kiss the Child record. And I thought it sounded at first, I, I really wasn't interested um, in the sound. I thought it was really, really heavy, really aggressive. And, you know, I was a I was always like a punk rock kid. So I liked um, Dead Kennedys. Um, I liked uh, Screeching Weasel, um, yeah. you know, some more of the punk rock type of, you know, Sex Pistols, that type of thing. So I wasn't really um, I was very fresh and new to, you know, screaming. You know, um, but then when I was home alone, I think, you know, I was upset, angry, frustrated, um, and I was listening to Hope's Fall, No Wings to Speak Of, and I really fell in love with that vocalist because um, it wasn't negative and evil or hateful. It was more of like frustration and emotion and yeah. um, sorrow and that's how I felt, right? I felt frustrated, confused, um, sad, right? Um, upset. And so I could just really connect with it. And I thought that after listening to that record, I really felt like it was on another level of emotion. It was it was something deeper than just singing about something. It was yeah. yelling and there was passion and all of this all these feelings behind his vocals and i was just like oh my gosh man like i would listen to um uh that record and i would just cry because i was like connected to the emotion on such a level and you know the power of music is amazing i mean what 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 we can do with it how it makes us feel what we think about how um you know past experiences just come up like it was yesterday just based off of a sound that we're, we're hearing, you know, and it brings us back to a place or a song can be like a lot of people say, you know, a song could be like, Oh, that was our song or that song was my victory anthem, you know, when I was going through school or whatever it was. Um, so that's kind of what really dragged me into it was the connection, the, the feeling like one with the vocals, you know? Um, and I was like, man, this is powerful. Um, you know, and that's, that's what really introduced me to metal music. And of course I've, gone to all these other crazy avenues that metal music goes you know there's so many there's so many you know rivers of yep. streams of of metal music that is so cool you know it's like and i know sometimes people get really judgy with it you know and that's fine you know you can like what you like but i think it's awesome man because it's like hey this is my way of playing metal music you know and that's their way and of of you know being able to create this art um and that's their art you know and no matter what i like or don't like i have respect for it because it's their art you know um and and we're not all supposed to like the same thing i don't think that that's you know i mean we're all individuals we're all unique we're all special in our own little ways and so i think that that's really cool that we all have our, our different ways of liking and creating art so the next step is for you to become a vocalist. How did that happen? Was it like was it like the same band who sort of influenced you to pick up the microphone or or how did that happen? So there's a band called Strike Anywhere. Okay, um, yeah, I know. You know them. Okay, so yeah. my first hardcore show was them in okay. a little tiny venue called New Brooklyn Tavern in Columbia, South Carolina. And you know, there's sweat dripping off the ceiling. It's, you know, everybody's stuffed like sardines in this tiny little venue. And this guy has got long dreads and he is just got so much energy and emotion. And you're, you're watching him, man. And he's on the stage and he's preaching his, you know, his truth, right? What he believes and how po politicians are, you know, this and that, or, you know, how this song was about, you know, his struggle or whatever it was, right? And 
he's just he he has no censor he's just being himself and he's being <laughs> vulnerable and he's being authentic and he gets off stage and i was just blown away i'd never seen anything like this in my life okay i was just so blown away by him and i had a i had a sharpie and i went up to him and i said man like i don't have like a piece of paper or anything but like you did an amazing job like will you will you sign my arm right so i i take the sharpie out right and he signs my arm and I'm looking down at his signature and I'm just blown away by this. And he gives me the Sharpie. And then I look up to him and he rolls his arm up and goes, now you sign my arm. And oh, cool. Yeah. And so like, cause like I was a young guy, you know, 17, yeah. I've been bullied. I've been picked on my, um, I didn't really have like a, a, a father figure. And so I never, I had never been met with so much honor and respect and equality and acceptance of where who I was, you know, because what he just did was he said, "Hey, you're just as worthy as I am. Yeah, you're just as important as me. Like you might be impressed with with me, you might be um, inspired or admire what I do, but you are just as important and you are just as worthy. Um, and so let me sign your arm. So he signed my arm, and that was the moment that I realized. For myself that that i wanted to be a vocalist i wanted to be able to give that i wanted to be able to share my truth and my beliefs and my my life but also through connecting people with music and encouraging them through lyrical content i can also get to that one-on-one -on -one place with somebody and i can tell them that they're loved that they're respected that they're honored and that they're valued and that's what i do and that's what I've been doing for 20 years. And I, I love it. I'm absolutely am very thankful and blessed for everything that I've got and the opportunity to do that. But that's where it began. So was She Walks in Beauty, your like first proper band? I see you did your research. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I, I've, I've, I've seen you pretty much every time you've been in Finland. And one of the first interviews I ever did with my magazines almost 20 years ago was an email interview with one of your, I don't know which uh, member of the band was replying, but those were the early days of my yeah. journalist career. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, congratulations on getting, getting to the place where you're at too. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, so, um, sorry, the, the, the question was, was he walks in, in beauty, like your oh, first the, band. Right. Right. Um, so she walks in beauty. Was it my first band? Um, I had probably three or four bands before that. Okay. Um, that I had worked really, really hard. Um, I worked at Sonic, which is like a fast food burger restaurant here in the States. Um, I was working at CC's Pizza, which is also like a fast food pizza place. And I was working at a um, a t-shirt company that would print, print, you know, designs and things. And what I did is I ended up selling my Nissan Maxima, my car, for a cargo van so that my band could go on tour. Okay. Um, and then when I worked at the printing, the t-shirt company, I said, don't give me a paycheck um print my band's t-shirts you know for me so i have merch to sell right so so over the years of being in in these different bands that i had created one was called smash adams which was like a pop punk thing um the other one was called last to know um where it was mostly you know singing but um like that post metalcore sound um and then she walks in beauty which was like the one that was the most serious that i had gotten the furthest with um, but, you know, working a couple different jobs, working at um, Journey as a shoe place, uh, getting the merch printed, selling my car to get a cargo van, um, you know, practicing three days a week with my bandmates, like gearing up and really trying to go on these like mini tours for the weekend. Um, you know, we, we were based in South Carolina, so we would um, try to find bands in Atlanta, Florida, um uh north carolina and we would just do these weekend tours you know okay um and we got some looks from some labels but the band itself 
was really just divided as far as work ethic, um, you know, pride and ego kind of got in the way um, and those types of things. And so, um, you know, She Walks in Beauty was a great, great band and we released a record and it was a lot of fun. And, you know, we used to burn CDs in the computer, you know, Good and we old, would, we, good old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, I remember being at my guitarist's house for hours, just sitting there, just making these CDs, numbering them, you know, printing, go, going to like a print, a printer store and getting the, the inlays, the album okay. inlays, you know what I mean? And yeah. today, which what's crazy is like, today I have 1500 of the new record that we that abr is coming out with and i'm signing these you know and so it's really cool because over 20 years of my career i'm still you know still putting in the time still trying to you know um get get this work done and doing doing what i love and what i'm passionate about and then to be able to see that we have a new album coming out and we've been doing it for 20 years it's just amazing you know like the feeling of of this and still you can actually see very, it yeah. from you that you are still very passionate for what you do and i respect a lot you in that sense yeah thank you man thank you yeah i'm 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 honored to to be able to to still be doing this you know and, and it's cool that people care you know um that's another part of this whole thing is like your fans are are everything and um to have them to give us the ability to continue to do our music is just um it's just amazing so i want to thank them uh for that you know so in terms of like getting into growling and screaming what kind of like early memories do you have when it comes to that were you like covering and mimicking your favorite vocalist in the early days when you were sort of trying to figure out your own vocal style or how did you actually in the end develop the sound that you have today Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think a lot of it was listening in um, intently um, to the vocalist on the album and trying to visualize how he's doing this. You know, how are how like what is he using? You know, in his diaphragm, how is he shaping his mouth? Um, you know, what's the force of air? You know, so you just try to visualize that and, and try to understand it. And then you try to do your best to replicate it. Um, so for me, it was really easy to do high screams. I could just, I sounded like a vampire. I remember I went into my band's rehearsal and I'm like, guys, I really want to learn how to scream and I really want to try this, you know? So I was doing it and my drummer was like, you sound awful. You sound <laughs> like Dracula or something. It's like, it's just... It's horrible, you know, um, and and my drummer at the time was was also my boss, who I was painting apartments with, okay. who showed me Norma Jean and Hope's Fall. So, um, yeah, you really gotta take your time with it and understand how your voice works. And what I learned was that it wasn't so much about pushing and all like real br like breathy screams and like just like really screaming it's more about being able to use the pa system to elevate your voice of how loud your voice is so that you don't have to push so hard and you can yep. get a decent results and then you find you find the balance of the amount of air that you're using the volume of your voice and how hard you're screaming the the volume of of how you're screaming and how high it is and you can find a little bit of a balance there and then you start to just practice that you start to just you know a little bit at a time every other day maybe 20 minutes of screaming you know and then rest your voice and and things like that and just listen intently to your vocals and see what you're doing and then when i got to that point it was okay Now I want to have a bunch of different levels and I want an emotional scream, you know? I want, um, how am I going to speak when I'm speaking in a song? What is that going to sound like? Um, so you kind of create your own identity as a vocalist 
finding, you know, what's your niche and what can you offer? And now when I go in the studio and I record a record, we have names for all of these screams. So there's yeah. a scream on the record that is kind of new. It's very like, it's very open and it sounds very deep and bold and, yeah, I was um, actually going to ask you later on that there is some like very darker type of vocals which are like I guess quite new for you. Yeah, we call that the Baroness. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because it, it reminds us of the band Baroness. Yeah, yeah. So, Greetings to those guys if they're watching afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um so we we yeah, so that's that's one of the screams. That's a newer one we call the Baroness. There's the the screeching eagle. Screeching okay. eagle is like really, 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 really high scream. Um, then we have the thrill seeker, which is uh kind of sounds a lot like the singer from Thrill Seeker, Josh McManus. Yeah. We we have the emotional yell. Um, we have um you know, all these different, well, there's so many of them. We just, you know what I mean? We have all these different names for all these styles because when we're recording, we know that my voice is an instrument, um, not just a messenger, but an instrument. Yeah. And so we want that instrument to sound connected to the music. And sometimes the music makes use, you know, the sounds angry. So we want, maybe we want a really just nasty, evil sounding scream you know or yelling part and then you know maybe it sounds a little more relaxed and so maybe we want the the yell the emo emo yell right so it's more of an emotional yelling um and then when we get into layers and dubbing things you know it's like okay let's put a, a screeching eagle over this part and see if it sounds really cool all right let's do a super low and then see what that sounds like. And then we can see which one do we like best. What's what's the most suitable for the instrumentation as far as my voice, right? Um, pertains to the to the measure or the 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 um the riff, right? Um so that's kind of how we go through that and work through that. So what kind of like early memories do you have when you joined like August Burns Red and you started to tour like more and have like many shows in a row? Were you sort of like ready as a vocalist for that kind of like, you know, being on the road and playing like 20 shows in Europe in a row? Or was that like difficult for you? Did you have the stamina already then? No. So, you know, touring is, is, uh, it's a very, um, difficult thing um uh, especially in the beginning because you're not you're not desensitized to certain things and you have to adapt um touring is all about adapting and understanding that every day is going to look different no matter how much you try to make it look the same yeah um especially in a van and trailer you know when you're playing a show and you don't get done until 10 o'clock and then you don't get packed until like 11 or 11 30, but you got to drive a, a six hour drive, you know, or an eight hour drive. Um, you know, you're taking shifts and sleeping in a, you know, in a seat. Right. Um, and you don't know when you're going to get a shower or, you know, you may not be able to get a hotel room. So there's a lot of obstacles there. Um, some people break down because their family, they're, they're far away from their family members and they don't like that. It's uncomfortable for them or they feel like they're missing out because you miss out on birthdays, holidays, you know, all of that kind of thing. Um, you're not making a lot of money in the very beginning. And so you really got to sacrifice everything. Um, you know, and I, I lived with my guitarist for the first, I don't know, year of us touring. Um because I couldn't afford my own place at that point. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of headaches and, and, and then, you know, you're, you're with these guys for months at a time and there's a lot of them. And there's a, that means there's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of different ways of thinking. There's a lot of different ways of living. There are a lot of different triggers. People, people get upset when you do something and you didn't even know that you just upset them right? Because that doesn't make sense to you. So you got to understand each other. You've got to build grace, forgiveness, um, you know, 
life happens. People are met with challenges. People struggle with certain things. So touring is, is, is very, it, you grow up a lot. Um, and there are benefits, obviously you're living your dream. You're seeing the world, you're meeting really cool people, you're building community, you're sharing your heart. Um, but there's a flip side to that, just like any other way of life. Um, but you know, when we first started out and I went on tour, uh, the longest tour I had ever done was like four or five days. Okay. And my first tour, my first show was January 28th in 2006 with August Burns Red. And we were on tour for, you know, I don't know, a month. And then there was a point where we went on tour for three months straight. We went to Europe. Then when we came home, I'm oh, sorry, we went to the States and did a B market. Then we flew to Europe and did a European tour with Bring Me the Horizon and Day to Remember. And then we came back and we did a four week long tour, maybe even five weeks with Under Oath in the States in the A markets. Um, and that was brutal. I, I didn't even know if I was going to make it, to be honest so with you, after that. So were you already back then doing some kind of like vocal warm ups to sort of maintain your voice or, or has that just Or do you do any kind of like warm ups before the show? Are you like an old school guy that you just go up on stage and warm up, or how do you prepare for the shows normally? Sure. Um, so I like to stretch a lot um, before shows, and I um, I'm a man of faith, so I, I pray before shows, um, and I like to get on the side stage before we play to watch the other band and the crowd to kind of gauge the energy in the room and also gauge the temperature in the room um those are two pretty big factors for me on stage okay. as an entertainer um you know if it's really 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 hot i might wear less clothes because um i sweat profusely when i sweat um and if it's really really hot sometimes that can make it difficult for my voice if it's really really cold in the room That's like my worst nightmare. Yeah, um, I guess that's the worst nightmare for every vocalist. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely just get infuriated, honestly, because this is my job. This is my profession. This is my career. The, these people came here to get a good show. They also came here, um, you know, to be entertained, and that's part of my job. And so when there's little things like that, I want to try to be as best prepared as I possibly can for those things. So that's why I try to go on the stage and just feel the crowd and the environment. Um, I like to work out and get my blood flowing, um, get my heart rate up, get a little sweat, um, pump up my muscles. It makes me feel good. makes me feel like I'm ready to engage. I'm ready to attack. Right. Um, and, and then I will do some vocal warmups. Um, but I don't do anything super crazy. I've never, I never have. Um, I like to, you know, maybe put on a song in the podcast and just sing um, a chorus or two of a song. And then that's pretty much, that's pretty much it at that point. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't really do a bunch of, you know, and I drink a lot of water. Um, and then I sleep. Sleep is really important. I try to sleep about 10 hours a night um, to rest my voice and my body because I'm a mover on stage and, uh, and I need quiet. So are there like some certain foods or drinks that you wouldn't rather have before the show that you feel that they affect, for example, your vocal cords somehow? Um, that's a good question. I think, I think heavy meals I can't do. Yeah. Um, so Before a show, what I'll try to do is like a salad with chicken. Um, but that's a big problem too, is like if you eat something and I feel heavy, it um, that affects the way I feel like I can maneuver around on stage. Yeah, I don't want to burp anything up, you know? Um, I don't want to throw anything up. Um, not that I've done that because of eating. I've done that because I was sick um, and I played a show and I just turned around. I threw up on on – Matt's drums, uh, right, right, right in the front of his kick drum. I just threw up, you know, and then I went back and I kept doing my thing. Um, but yeah, I would say heavy meals, man, like, like any kind of burrito or anything like a, maybe like mashed potatoes or a big steak or something. It's just not smart. 
um, for me. So sometimes I won't even eat. Um, and if I do eat, it might be like three hours before so that I can process that food. Um, and I, cause I want to feel light, you know, oh, it's like a, like a boxer. Like you want to just like be able to bounce around and feel yeah. light. So, um, mostly it's water. Mostly I drink, I just try to drink a lot of water, um, with hydration like tablets. Um, I really like those. I like, I like the hydration tablets in my waters on stage. Okay. Because they they got a little flavor in them. That's great. And they promote hydration. And like I said, I, I sweat quite a bit. Um, so I, I like to have those as well. I have three questions left. And, this, and the next one I want to ask you that obviously you've released quite a few albums already with August Burns Red. But is there like some album that you could sort of pinpoint where you feel that you have made the most progress as a vocalist? that you feel that you are like very proud of that specific album. Phantom Anthem is that record for me. Okay. Yeah. That's when, that's when, um, I gave the best, um, deliveries on an album as a whole. Okay. I feel, I feel like Phantom Anthem was, was really it for me. Um, I love that record. I love the way my voice sound sounds in that album and i just remember being in the studio recording that record and feeling really good about it just feeling okay. really good about what how i was delivering um the chemistry with my myself and and the uh vocal engineer um grant mcfarland um we just had a lot of fun recording that record um and my voice just was at this place where everything sounded really bold and really well done and so i was just yeah man i was that's my record that's the one if you want to hear like everything that i had gotten and achieved up to that point was displayed on that record yeah and i'm i must add also death below because your vocals are amazing on this upcoming album so job well done for you thank you yeah so you've heard the whole album yeah i have it's very good Good. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. That's That means a lot to me. So second last question goes that what what were your like parents' reactions when they heard that you have become a metal vocalist and started screaming your lungs out? Yeah, so my mom, um, my mom has always, you know, tried to support me. Um, I think at first they were a little scared, um, like you know, how are you going to make this a career, you know? Yeah. Um, and I remember my professor told me in, in college, I went to, to college for music business and, um, audio engineering. And I remember my professor said to me or to the class, he says, okay, who wants to be a touring musician? Raise your hand. And I was like me, you know, he said, great. He said, you have a point zero zero one percent chance yep. of making that a reality. And I remember I just put my head in my, in my in my desk and i just started to cry because that was all i cared about that was all i had it was all i wanted it was all that that i felt my life was for my purpose you know um so i remember that that at first i think there was a lot of hesitation there was a lot of go get it you know hope the best but like you should probably have a backup plan yeah that's what um, they say <laughs> <laughs> yeah where's the plan b you know and i remember i i remember i dropped out of college and my mom was pissed she was like why are you dropping out of college and i said mom it's taken up too much of my time for my my career in music and she said you don't have a career in music and i said yeah i do you know and so i think a lot of what what we need sometimes it's good for us not to have a backup plan yeah You know, and sometimes we need to speak, we need to speak that we are doing this. It is going to happen. We will achieve our goals. You know, like we have to have, we have to position ourselves to believe that. If you don't do that, you will not succeed simply yeah. because you don't want to, you know, but if you want to, then the opportunities that come, you're going to go after them. I, you know, in 2006, when August Burns Red said, we want you to try out. I had a job. I had a family. I lived in South Carolina, which is several states away from Pennsylvania. 
you know But i had you my had friend that passion for it and it all was that your had goal to go correct um so you know I, i want the listeners and the viewers to to understand that like it's you know we have to believe it you know and and through that belief comes opportunities and we we will take those opportunities because we believe you know there's there's a process right and so after i went on my first couple tours and my mom was like holy crap <laughs> like he's in magazines he's you know he's touring the the world he went to europe you know obviously she was extremely proud of me and um thought you know this is amazing and and uh and then i'm blessed which i am Any advice you would like to give to a young metal vocalist who is just about to start their journey? Yeah. Um, one is really take time to understand your voice and your abilities in that moment. If you can't do something, that's okay. What can you do? And start there. Because as you grow and understand how your voice works, you're going to grow and be able to do certain things down the road. that in the beginning you can't do just like everything else right if you're gonna you know if you're gonna ride a bike you know you've got to go take your beginning steps right and then all of a sudden now you're doing bmx and you're doing all these backflips and grinds and everything else it's the same thing so just understand your voice the second thing is what do you want to tell the world and what is going to be your identity as a vocalist are you going to curse in your in your vocals Are you going to just talk about negative things in your lyric? Are you going to get on stage and be, you know, a negative, you know, voice? Or are you going to be a positive voice? Do you want to encourage people? Do you want to uplift people? Do you want to write songs about overcoming and adversity? And, you know, what are wh what kind of person are you going to be on stage? Are you going to be loud and aggressive? Are you going to be quiet and calm? Are you going to pace? Are you going to jump around? Are you going to swing the microphone around, right? Like, Understanding your identity as you as a front man. How do you carry yourself publicly? How how do you carry yourself, right? Because as much as being an artist and a vocalist and a lyricist, there's the other side of this whole thing. And that's looks and imagery and um, um, performance, right? You're there to perform and entertain on stage as much as you are there to share your art. And that is... You have to encapsulate all of that so that it's well-rounded so that you can be professional, right? And then the last thing I would say is don't burn bridges. Everybody in this industry knows everybody. Yeah. This world is small. And if you burn a bridge because you're cocky and you got an ego, that's going to carry on into the all the other relationships that you touch. And so what, Fact. We, yeah, what we try to do is You want to be professional, then act professional. You want yeah. to, you, you get frustrated, walk away, T hang up the phone, right? You don't need to react in this industry. You need to respond, and 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 you need to learn how to respond to things and not react to them. Um, that's that's what I would give. Thank you a lot for this interview, and and looking forward to catching you in Finland again sometime when you are heading to Europe again. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. And you have the next interview coming. So jump on to that. Thanks a lot, <laughs> awesome. Jake. Take care. Yeah, have a good one. Thank Bye. you. Bye.